As you open your laptop, the familiar blue glow of the screen fills the room. You guide your web browser over to your favorite site, scroll through and find a video that arouses your interest and click play. You relax, unzip, grab lotion, tissues nearby, and you are ready to go. 10, 20, 30 minutes, two hours later, you emerge having completed, but feeling deflated. Rush of sadness and shame wash over you. Guilt, loneliness, and isolation fill your mind. And where just minutes ago were the moaning, screaming, heaving chests of attractive women, now all you see is the dark down side of your addiction. And where once, just moments ago, your mind was filled with the moaning, heaving chests of attractive women, now all you can think about is willpower and lack of control and how you wish you hadn't. If this scene sounds at all familiar to you, or if even just me describing that kind of gets you interested in going to find some porn, then my friend, you may have a porn addiction, or as I like to call it, a porn problem. In this series of videos, I'm gonna discuss the mechanisms that cause porn addiction and how it's not your fault if you find yourself addicted to porn. I'm gonna give you a test that you can use to determine if you are addicted or if you have a porn problem. And three, I'm gonna give you exactly a step-by-step -step process for quitting porn for good and not having to deal with this painful problem ever again. So if you're not already subscribed to my channel, please do so right now because you are not gonna to want to miss any of the upcoming videos in my Problem Porn Trilogy. This first video is all about how porn is addictive. And yes, it is addictive. Make no mistakes about it. And just like other things that are addictive, like nicotine or alcohol or cocaine, you can have a relationship with it that you stay in the driver's seat and that you are in control of, but that is not the case for a lot of people. So let me break down a little bit of the mechanisms of addiction. You see, when you desire something, when you want and crave something, you're actually activating a neurotransmitter in your brain that is called dopamine. Dopamine is the chemical of desire. When we see a fat, juicy burger on a commercial and our brain starts to go, ooh, you know what sounds really good? Fat, juicy, steamy burger. That's dopamine activating. And dopamine activates so that we can actually go get the thing that we are desiring. It actually is what helps to propel us and give us the momentum that we need to go and get the thing that we want. In the case of the fat juicy burger, dopamine spikes right around the first bite. And you and I both know it's the first bite of a delicious juicy burger that tastes the best. The little streams of fat running down your cheek and the condiments and all. And then by the time you're on your last bite, it still feels pretty good, but you start to move into a different set of chemicals that release into your brain a sense of being sated and not desiring any more juicy burger. This is simple enough to understand when it comes to something like a burger. But what's different about porn? Well, you see, porn also acts upon your sexual response cycle. And when it comes to sex, we human beings have a special additional drive and additional desire loop in our brains. And it's because sex has been very, very important, probably the most single most important thing to our species over time. If it weren't for sex, we wouldn't be here. If it weren't for every single one of your ancestors successfully copulating and getting pregnant and ejaculating and then giving birth, you would not be here. So one thing that every single one of your ancestors has in common, they had sex and they reproduced. And because it's such an important drive in the human animal, we are hardwired to seek it. The same is true with the burger because many, many millennia ago, we lived in environments where fats and sugars were scarce. And so the desire to go eat some fat, the desire to go eat some sugar and get an ice cream cone is actually hardwired into us. It's what allowed our ancestors to survive. But remember our ancestors never lived in a landscape where there was McDonald's and Burger King and twisty cones and fat juicy burgers around every single corner. And our ancestors didn't live in a land where there was 24 hour access 
access to pornography. In fact, our ancestors were probably pretty lucky if they caught a view of a boob across the watering hole. That was probably the most excitement that they could count on. And now, today, we each of us have in our pockets ability to access porn within one or two clicks, swipes, and types. And our ancestors and our brains have just not caught up to having that kind of unfettered access to internet pornography, which unlike a hot juicy burger, you don't even have to drive somewhere to get. So back to dopamine. Dopamine is released when we even think about porn. For example, when I gave you that visualization at the beginning of the video, you might have felt the urge to go look at internet porn. That was dopamine telling your body to go get something that it desires. Interestingly enough, when it comes to sex, there's a second dopamine rush, and that is directly related to actually fulfilling our body's desire to have sex, which is an extremely strong desire and a universal desire that we all experience. Now, even though you're not actually having sex, your body doesn't know the difference between watching sex on camera and on video and you actually having it. So it releases the same chemicals as if you were the person who was actually having sex, which means you get the dopamine from the desire to watch porn at all, and then you get the dopamine of having sex and reaching orgasm and your body rewards you in that way too. This makes porn a one-two punch for creating an addictive cycle. Now, one other interesting thing to note about porn is that like common to all addictions, we end up developing a tolerance, which means we watch it, but it has less of an effect, less of a dopamine rush, and it feels less good. So we have to watch more and more frequently. I'm going to talk more about this in the next two videos, because this is one of the best indications that you actually have a porn problem or may even have a porn addiction. The most important thing for you to know right now, right here, is that it is not your fault. Porn addiction is not a result of not having a strong enough willpower. It is not a case of you're weak and you just succumb to porn or you're bad or you're sinful. I want you to throw out all of those ideas. Listen to me, even if, it, even if in your brain you're like, no, it's because I am a piece of ish. That's why, throw that out for right now. Listen to me, I'm the expert, okay? It's not your fault. Your brain is hardwired to do this. If you've ever had trouble putting down a candy bar or saying no to ice cream, which I know I have, then you are human. You are human, not to mention that the triggers for watching porn are everywhere. Again, you, every time you open your laptop or look at your phone, and let's face it, a lot of us are stuck at home right now and all we have to interact with the rest of the world is our laptop or our cell phone. And so yes, if the thing that you are addicted to that's working on your most basic hardware in your lizard brain is constantly available to you just a couple clicks away and it gives you that instant hit of dopamine and maybe there's nothing else to do right now except for like play Mario Kart and wait until the world opens again, of course you're gonna develop a relationship with this thing. I mean, it would be hard not to. With beautiful, naked, heaving bodies available 24 seven every single day on the internet, it's amazing that human beings are able to look at or think about anything else. So please do not beat yourself up. Step two, please do subscribe to my channel. In the next two videos, I'm gonna give you a test to determine if your porn use is problematic. And then I'm gonna give you my step-by-step -step plan for developing a healthy relationship with porn, which doesn't mean zero porn. For most people, they can have a healthy relationship with porn. And by the way, developing that healthy relationship, whether for you that includes a little porn or no porn or some porn, it's going to be a part of what makes you an incredible lover, a better man, a more productive, happier person who feels more fulfilled with themselves and with their choices. So congratulations. If you have a problematic relationship to porn, this is gonna be part of your comeback story. This is what is gonna make you a better human being all around. So you can thank porn for giving you a problem so that you had something to overcome because it is in the overcoming of our obstacles that we really become great. We really develop our strengths in result to our challenges. All right, that's it for me for this video. If you have any questions, please feel free to write them in the comments. Make sure that you are subscribed and I will catch you in part two of my problematic porn trilogy.